I was 11 years old back in 1980, and I remember we had the little radios, and literally, it must have been an AM station, because I can still hear the static and listen to the, the call as it's going on, and everyone had to be quiet so you could hear you know, exactly what they were saying and who had the puck and who scored. And It sounds like back in the old days when they all huddle around the radio and listen to the whatever show on Sunday nights. That's what it was like. You got a group of four or five guys all down on their stomachs trying to look at it like you're going to see something happening when actually you're just wanting to be there so bad and just listening to the play-by-play -play as it's going on. I remember thinking that if they could just hang in there and stay close, they could give themselves a chance. And because the Russians always had the potential to pull out and just make it, you know, a beat down 9-1, 9-2, whatever it might be. But they just kept hanging in there and hanging in there. And Jimmy Craig playing great goaltending as he did the whole Olympics. Then all of a sudden you see the world's greatest goalie, Trediak, giving up a rebound at the end of the second. And we scored with one second left. All of a sudden you, all these pieces started falling into place where, hey, this could actually maybe happen. And then, I mean, the storybook ending with Mikey Ruzioni, who literally almost was not even on the team, maybe the last added as one of the senior captains to score the winning goal. And to just see the team come together like they did on every goal through the Olympics, not a lot of people know, is the bench cleared and they all celebrated together after every goal. All of a sudden, they won. I remember sprinting home, down, down the road, trying to get home to tell my mom and my family, they, well, we beat the Russians, we beat the Russians, and it was just amazing, you know? It's, and as a young kid, I still get chills talking about it. When you're playing the game, you're really not that nervous because you just got to go play. But when you have no control, and at that time, the Team USA might as well have been the biggest thing in my life at that moment, and you're just hoping so bad that they can win at that moment. It's stressful, it's nerve-wracking, but at the end of the day, it was just one of the greatest memories of my childhood. The next day, we're in the van trying to listen to the Finland game, going to our game in whatever city we're going to play in, and the realization that U.S. had won a gold medal, and it was just unheard of going into those Olympics that Russia wouldn't come out of there with the gold medal. Maybe Czech would give them a little bit of a run, maybe Sweden, but there was just, there was not, nothing in my child that I remember that was such a long shot underdog coming to the forefront as that game, not only that game, but that Olympics. It was something that should have never happened, could have never happened, that did happen. The underdog came through and it was just an amazing, amazing moment. It was bigger than just a hockey game. I think the biggest impact on the culture, especially in our country here, is literally it, it paraphrases anything is possible. 